is a, is a privilege to be able to share the word of the Lord at Fireplace Fellowship. And um, outside of Christ, the best thing that's ever happened to in my life, sitting on the front row, my wife, Miss Candy. And, uh, and, then, and then, actually, in the last couple of years, one of the best additions to our life was our executive pastor, Miss Linda Hilliard. I love you. And then, So there's nothing that, outside of Christ, and I think you cannot separate the two, that are more precious to me than the church. And so tonight, I want to preach to you on the church. And if you have your Bibles, we're going to read the probably most remembered verse concerning the church. Is out of Matthew chapter 16. And we are going to start reading <clears throat> with verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist. Some say that thou art Elijah. Others say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But then Jesus looked at them and he said, But who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art Christ. Hallelujah. The Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. And our, t- our text verse tonight would be verse 18. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I want to extract from this verse five words. I will build my church. What makes this statement so astounding that Jesus says is that the carpenter of Nazareth very likely never built anything bigger than a stool, a bench, or a yoke of oxen in his father's shop. Yet that evening standing before his disciples, he declared, I am going, hallelujah, To build a church of such nature, of such quality, so durable that the gates of hell in all of their fury, in all of their rage, cannot hold it back, restrain it, can't stop it until the day that the church outshines the sun the moon and the stars in all of their glory for time and eternity so this evening i want to look at the statement that jesus declared such five powerful words i the divine builder will the divine decree build the divine method my the divine title deed and church the divine structure first of all from these words i would like to look at the man who's going to build the church secondly we're going to look at the method that jesus employed to build the church and last we're going to look at the materials that jesus used in erecting the church When a builder is selected, his credentials are asked for. You're not going to ask just anybody off of the street 
that's built a small structure to build your home. You're going to ask, is your work guaranteed? Are you licensed? Do you have a bond? Do you have the skills? Do you have references? And do you have experience? So if we look at this Jesus of Nazareth, the carpenter, the church that Jesus proposes is first of all built on the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. I will build a church with the emphasis on I. Throughout the ministry of Jesus, he associated himself with the declaration that he gave at the burning bush to Moses. When Moses asked Jesus or God, who do I say has sent me? God told Pharaoh to tell Moses, I am that I am. When Jesus throughout his ministry makes this statement again and again with the woman at the well in John 7 after a dissertation he looked at her he said woman I am after John 6 and feeding the multitudes he said I am the bread of life John 8 to the scribes and Pharisees before Abraham was I am John 9 when he healed the blind boy he said I am the light of the world John 10 he said I am the door of the sheepfold I am the good shepherd John 11 to sorrowing Martha and Mary as they wept over their brother who was rotting he said I am the resurrection and the life John 14 and 6 he said I am the way I am the truth and I I am the life. John 15, he said, I am the true vine to Judas in his murderous brigade when they came to seek him out he said whom do you say that I am they said Jesus we're looking for him he said I am he and at that moment they fell to the ground one day this will happen to the whole world if such a faint glimpse of the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ could make them fall at his feet imagine when he comes back in his glory with all of the father hallelujah before the world and they will all bow down to the name of Jesus Paul said wherefore God has highly exalted him given him a name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is the Christ and to the Lord and the glory of God the Father. Does he have their credentials to build a church? He's the same I am that turned 70 souls into a nation of several million. Turned a rock into a river. Turned a sea into a highway. Lit up the night with a pillar of fire. Turned the machinery of death into reverse at the Easter tomb. Conquered death hell and the grave can he build a church in 2022 the church in the wilderness the church in the dark ages the church in the upper room and the church today answers with a thundering yes he can yes he can hallelujah hallelujah Secondly, I want to look at the divine decree. He said, I will build a church. Not I hope to. I plan to. I'm going to start soon. He said, I will and hell not withstanding. If you could have asked this carpenter of Nazareth, 
How are you going to fulfill this audacious decree? He would have said, I'm going to die for the world. I'm going to go to the cross. I'm going to give my life for a ransom. I'm going to ascend to my father. And I'm going to put my blood on the mercy seat. I'm going to fill my church with my nature. I'm going to possess them. Excite them. Empower them. Defend them. Activate them. And then I'm going to send them around the world to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. How many times have we heard declared, if only I would have known beforehand the problems, the setbacks, the obstacles that I would have encountered. I would have never started the project. But Jesus knew. He knew that Peter would deny him. He knew that Judas would betray him. He knew his disciples would forsake him. He knew that the Rome arenas would be stained with the blood of countless Christians. But they would not deny the Lord Jesus Christ. He knew that one day a small town monk named Martin Luther in 1517 would light a torch of faith. Hallelujah. That would begin to light the world. In spite of the lukewarmness today. In spite of the faults doctrines, uh, the spirits of antichrist, uh, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, uh, wolves in sheep's clothing, uh, false prophets, uh, homosexuality in the church, uh, watered down gospels, uh, evil politics, uh, COVID trying to shut down the church. Uh, Jesus knew uh, that the church uh, would not only survive, uh, would, would triumph uh, in 2022 uh, and would shine with glory around the world you can't kill her you can't bury her you can't outlaw her because she is the body of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah the method He didn't say, I will plant my church. Doesn't take much to plant. Dig a little hole. Put in a seed. Throw in a little bit of water. Watch over it from time to time. He didn't say, I will build my church or plant it. He said, I am going to build my church. Building requires the plans of an architect, a good foundation, the selecting, the gathering, the sorting of materials, and the choice of workmen. Jesus then declared that you and I would help him build the church because we are workers and laborers together. But instead, hallelujah, of giving you and I a tool chest, he gave us keys. Keys imply a lock. A lock implies a closed door a closed door implies a prison and a prison implies a prisoner but Luke 4 18 Jesus said this the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me to preach deliverance to the captives The world today is a miserable, wretched prison of people who are sin bound. But Jesus, hallelujah, has given you and I a blood bought, Holy Ghost filled, anointed 
gospel for us to preach and to proclaim to the world a gospel that is not weak a gospel that has survived the ages a gospel that has been burned and buried maligned and mistranslated but the word of God endures and stands forever it is a gospel hallelujah that is a sword that cuts loose the bondages and breaks the chain of dominion John the Baptist came preaching but Jesus said I too must go to other cities and preach also Jesus said to his disciples go into all the world and preach the gospel if we want to change the world we must go back to the age old tried method that it's not entertainment it's not personality but it is the gospel that the world needs for the blood of the gospel hallelujah still runs strong still runs true it's still powerful it's still anointed it is the voice of God crying unto the world come unto me all ye that are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest God knew the time would come when men would not be able to endure sound doctrine but the command to preach has never been rescinded he did not come and say rewrite it to fit the culture but said the word of God shall live and abide forever before Jesus can come back for the church he declared this the gospel must be preached around the world and to all nations if there ever was an hour that the gospel must be preached it is this hour that every nation shall hear the good news that there is a God who is not dead and not in a tomb but he is alive and well and his name is Jesus he's not a prophet he's not a teacher but he is God almighty manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, believed on in the world, and received into glory. This same Jesus is going to break the clouds of glory and come back and no man will be able to stop him. And when he comes, he's coming with a shout and the voice of an archangel for the church. Nothing will ever replace the preaching of the gospel. It will never become outdated. It will never lose its power. It will never be removed from the earth in spite of all of the antics of hell. Paul said God has shown us in the foolishness of preaching to save them that are lost. Preaching, hallelujah, of the gospel is greater than singing, greater than testifying. It is declaring the nature of the almighty, the I am, that I am. The preaching of the gospel can heal a broken heart, give peace to a troubled soul. It will be enough for sin, sorrow, sadness, bondage, slavery, addiction, depression, suicide, pornography, murder, and hatred. There is no sin that the gospel cannot overpower. There is no enemy that the gospel cannot conquer. There is no continent that the gospel cannot cross over into. There is no demon that can tell the gospel no. There is no politician that can eradicate there is no preacher that can say it's not so but the gospel the gospel the gospel shall be preached into all the world time cannot weaken it laws cannot change it it cannot
cannot be outdated. This gospel transcends man, time, laws, and hell. The preaching of the gospel is still the master key to all men's problems. It is the key that will open up every heart, open up every cell door, and let every man walk out. It's the same key that opened hell up when Jesus descended into the lower part and let out the Old Testament saints. It's the same key that gives you and I freedom and liberty today. Jesus used these keys on Nicodemus, the woman in adultery, and the thief on the cross. Peter used these keys on the day of Pentecost. Philip used them in Samaria and preaching to the Ethiopian eunuch. Paul used them in Corinth and Philippi. Martin Luther used them in Germany. John Wesley used them in England. D.L. Moody used them in the United States. Hudson Taylor used them in China. David Livingston used them in Africa in praying hide in India. And you and I still have the same keys today that are not worn out, that are no longer obsolete. But in spite of all of the locks that the devil has come up with today, this is the master key that can lock, unlock any prison and unlock any bondage and cause men to walk out by the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Lastly, if we can look at the materials that Jesus used. Normally a builder wants to use only the best materials available but not Jesus. Today, he has chosen <clears throat> as his material the twisted, the rotten, the blasted, the broken, and the bruised. That's you and me. He washed us in his blood he buried us in baptism he's changed our nature and he declares this is the material that will make up my glorious church that the gates of hell will never prevail against the genealogy genealogy of this church has in it an adulterer named David, a drunk named Noah, a prostitute named Rahab, and a blasphemer named Paul. And in 1 Corinthians 6, 11, Paul said, and such were some of you. And yet, as we sit on these pews, these chairs tonight, <clears throat> You and I should have been discarded. We should have been thrown in the junk pile because we had nothing to offer. But God in his love and in his mercy looked beyond our faults and he saw our need. He saw the potential when we were so messed up and so rebellious, and so weak, and so ruled by sin. And yet he said, I think I have a place that she can fit into, that I can put him in this place, and they will make my church more beautiful. So he's taken, hallelujah, the rejects and the discarded and those that have not had any confidence. And he's raised you and I up and he's made us beautiful by the blood of the lamb and put us, hallelujah, in the kingdom of the Lord. <clears throat> 
1 Corinthians 1 27 says but God has chosen the foolish sayings of the world to confound the wise he has chosen the weak things of the world to confound them that are mighty he has taken the base things of the world and things hallelujah which are despised and God has chosen yea and the things which are not to bring those things which are to not that no flesh should glory in his presence so the Lord hallelujah was not looking for great intellect he was not looking for great talent he was not looking for great abilities he was looking for a broken and a contrite spirit and he reached down into the depths of hell grabbed a hold of you and pulled you out washed you hallelujah with the blood of a loving father and said I'm making you a new creation in Christ Jesus changed you gave you a name hallelujah that is a new name in glory filled you with his power and his nature gave you authority over every demon and over every devil put you on the rock Christ Jesus and told you go out into the world heal the sick raise the dead cast out devils that's who you and I are today by the power of God today God has reached into every continent race culture color young and old rich and poor to obtain material for his glorious church. So in spite of racism, in spite of the differences of a culture, in spite of the bigotry and the educational barriers, God has a church of the rich and the poor, the young and the old, of every ethnicity, female and male, children and the age. And yet this church cannot be defined, cannot be described, cannot be be painted because she is forever changing from image to image and from glory to glory that she might manifest the very picture of who Christ is. In this hour, the master carpenter of Nazareth has formed the masterpiece hallelujah, of the ages without spot, without wrinkle or blemish, perfect in his likeness and has become his bride throughout all eternity. Just as Hitler, Stalin, Mussolini, Caesar, Nero, Castro, Saddam Hussein, Attila the Hun, have had to bow their knee to Jesus Christ. So will every man in this age yield and bow down to the name of Jesus because of the power of the church of this age. So do not for a moment think that the church is done. Do not think for a moment because the wicked rule the media and the airwaves that our voice has become mute and silent. But this church, hallelujah, has a shout in it that will be heard around the world until Jesus comes back. There will always be a preacher. There will always be a prophet. There will always be a worship leader. There will always be a church. There 
there'll always be an altar. There'll always be victory. There'll always be harvest and revival. Why? Because the church was designed for the year 2022 when all hell is broke loose. The church is the answer of the ages to the soul of mankind for this day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is why you got to stay part of the church. This is why he said, forsake not the assembling of thyselves together. Because it's only in the church that God can do what he has to do. Because you and I are the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And where the church is, there Christ is free to release his glory and his purpose. Hallelujah. Amen. How many believe in the power of the church?